Hey guys, my name is Rob, and today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the Beitong Asura 2 Pro Plus Nearling version. Yes, that's a lot of name, but essentially this is an updated version of the Asura 2 Pro Plus, which has been around for a bit, but the updated version includes the Nearlink chip, and according to Beitong, it's the world's first controller to include Nearlink, which makes it the first 2000 Hz polling rate controller on the market. I do know of other controllers that will be including Nearlink technology, but as of the time of this recording, this is the only one that I've seen available for sale, and it's the first one I've actually been able to get my hands on, so I can't dispute that claim. For the sake of transparency, I do want to let you know that this controller was sent to me for review by Beitong. However, this video is not sponsored by Beitong. I was not paid for this review, nor was I asked to say or not say anything specific, other than they recommended that I mention the 2000 Hz polling rate, which clearly I would have done regardless, as that is absolutely the number one selling point of this controller, and the reason I'm interested in doing this review. So with all that said, we're going to open it up, test it out, and find out how the Nearlink tech and the controller overall performs. So immediately you'll notice the USB dongle just kind of laying inside the box. I could actually hear it bouncing around inside before I even opened the box. I assume it's not supposed to be like this, so hope it's okay. We've got an e-user manual, though not really. There's no QRC code to scan or anything. It just gives you the website address and directions for downloading your manual. But I guess that's okay because we also have an actual manual here, so we're covered either way. And this one does have QRC codes for their website, their official YouTube, and their official TikTok. And then we've got that USB dongle, which is very simple, no pairing button, that's just a symbol. Foam rings to protect the joysticks. I feel like it's been a while since I've unboxed a controller that didn't have those, so that's cool. Let's see what's underneath and we'll come back to the controller. So just a USB-A to USB-C cable. I believe this is a five foot cable and it's not braided or anything, just a standard cable. And now finally we have the gamepad, which I actually really like the color scheme here. I think this till color is nice. Even the clear ABXY buttons with the colored letters look good. And we have the Beitong logo on one side and then the Nearlink logo on the other. Even the accents on the button area and around the thumbsticks, in my opinion, are a nice touch. Then all silver for all the other buttons, including the bumpers and triggers and the rear buttons. So cosmetically, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. We do have Hall Effect thumbsticks, thankfully, so no real concerns about stick drift. The thumbstick caps are a bit unique. They're like more concave, I guess. They feel like they might provide a little more grip in game. The stick base is also transparent, so you can actually see the thumbstick modules, which is kind of cool. The face buttons are mechanical, which we love over here. And the D-pad is membrane. It's just a four-way D-pad, but if that's going to be the case, a lot of people would actually prefer a membrane D-pad, so I'm okay with that. Then in the center front of the controller, we have the start button and the shift button, which we'll go over shortly. Then the turbo button and the back button and the home button, which I assume powers on the controller. Yep, not that it's going to do anything right now since I don't have the controller connected to anything. The shoulder buttons are also membrane, but they feel really good. They're still very clicky. They're also very quiet. I love these. The triggers are Hall Effect. And man, these are super quiet too. They almost feel cushioned or something when they're fully depressed. Yeah, these just feel really good, both the bumpers and the triggers. The rear buttons, on the other hand, are really loud. They don't sound cheap and hollow like some rear buttons, but I do wish they were quieter. The placement seems good though. I'm assuming this tiny hole here is a reset button that you can push with a pin if for some reason you need to reset the controller. And there's also a removable cover here. Uh, I know what that's for. So you've got an onboard spot there to store the wireless dongle. That's actually a cool feature. I wish more gamepads did that. It's just one less dongle for me to throw in my accessories drawer, so yay for that. I think that pretty much covers the physical features, so we'll jump over to the PC and check out the app and do some testing. This is the Beitong Gamepad Assistant app, which you can use to customize the Asura 2 Pro Plus, and at the top you'll notice there are separate tabs for PC and Switch Mode. The only thing different in the menus here is that the Switch Mode doesn't allow you to change the polling rate, 
and it shows sensitivity for what is essentially the gyro settings rather than an on-off. We'll go through the PC setup and starting at the top you have lighting and vibration. The only lighting patterns are normal and breathing and then you can also customize the color. Just to be clear, the only RGB on the controller is the circle around the home button, and then you can also set it to flash when vibrating, as well as adjust the brightness. On a lot of controllers, I'll turn the RGB brightness way down, but since it's literally just a circle around the home button, I don't find it too distracting. I am going to turn vibration off though, or rather I already have, and I can confirm if you put it at the lowest setting like this, it is completely off. Next we have joystick settings, which are separated left and right. You can adjust the sensitivity curve here, and they have several presets, but you can also use custom to create your own. I typically leave these set as default and then set my sensitivity curve in game for whatever games I'm playing. You can also adjust the dead zones here, which I think were originally set at like 10%. I have them at two now, and I'll show you why in a minute. If you made any changes, it does warn you that changes aren't saved if you try to change scenes. So either going over to switch mode or clicking the advanced settings, so you do need to go over here and click apply to controller to save any changes you make. If you click on advanced settings, you do get a lot of the same stuff here, but with some additional options. Alternatively, you can go back and click on configuration assistant, and it has pretty much the same options as under the advanced settings, but it kind of walks you through it step by step, so may be useful the first time you set up the controller. As this info box explains, you can set up different profiles as well, which you can rename in the app. As far as I can tell, there's no on-the-fly profile swapping option though, so you do have to change it in the app. The lighting and vibration options on this first page are the same as on the home page, except you can set the frequency for the breathing RGB mode, and you can set vibration independently for left and right. The second page is labeled button, and here you can remap the two rear buttons. You can also remap the rest of the buttons on the Asura gamepad, pretty much everything except for the turbo, shift, and home buttons. Unfortunately, you can't map keybinds. I did try it multiple times, but it will only accept controller inputs when assigning actions here. I wasn't really expecting it to work, so I'm not surprised, just a little bit disappointed. I've assigned A and B to M1 and M2, which are the rear buttons. And the other thing to point out here is that you can set the turbo rate down at the bottom. We'll go over how to actually set up turbo in just a bit. Next, we have the joystick tab, and this tab does have some of the same settings we've already been over. Again, the left and right joysticks are separated and we can adjust the sensitivity curve and the dead zone settings. So we have the joystick automatic centering, which you can turn on or off. For me, I'm going to turn this off because I don't want the controller artificially manipulating the joystick position, but it's something you might play around with to see if you like it or not. Then the other additional option is joystick curve switching. This is kind of weird, but you can set a single button on the controller to switch the sensitivity curve of the joystick, it kind of reminds me of the sensitivity clutch setting on the new Razer Wolverine V3 controllers, but rather than changing the overall sensitivity, holding in the set button will change what sensitivity curve the joystick is using. To be honest, it's hard for me to imagine a scenario in which I would use this, but maybe I'm not thinking outside the box on this enough. If you guys have thoughts about how this could be useful or game changing, let me know. The other thing we can do on this page is recalibrate the joysticks, which you can actually get to from several places in the app, so it's not hard to find. It's similar to pretty much every other joystick calibration process I've used, though it does ask you to do just one full rotation on each joystick, and I feel like most of them ask you to do three or more. I could have sworn I cleared that trigger switch button, but glad I noticed it before exiting at least. The next page is for the, I'm going to say, somatosensory. I hope that's right, I'm not sure, but this is the gyro settings for the controller. By default, this is off in PC mode, but you can enable it by mapping it to either joystick or to button inputs. You can adjust the sensitivity, and you can also select between immediate and continued for the mode of input. Feel free to pause here if you want to read the full tip box on these. Then you can set it as always on, press and hold to enable, or toggle on and off. You can also invert the Y axis, and then if I understand this correctly, you can set anti-dead zone, so I assume for games that have built-in dead zone that you can't adjust in-game. Then if we change this to button, you can set separate buttons for up, down, or up and down, left, right, or left and right, side motions, etc. Guys, I'd like to be thorough with the gyro stuff, but I just don't use it on any controller, so I'm just not a good source for evaluating the function and quality of gyro controls. I'm sorry. Then on the final tab, we have the sleep timer, which we can adjust and then calibration options for the joysticks and the triggers. We just calibrated the joysticks, but we'll do the triggers here just to show it. 
And again, it just wants a single input for both triggers, just like the joysticks. Once that's done, we can hit complete and it takes us back to the home page of the app. So one thing we kind of glanced over on the home page is the polling rate slider in the bottom right, and we can select between 500, 1000, and 2000 Hz. There's also a tab on the far left for button testing, and this looks pretty much like any other built-in tester in a controller app, but we are going to use this to show one thing really quick. I said earlier that we would talk about the shift button later, and the primary function of that button is that it swaps the inputs of the D-pad and left joystick, so you can change that on the fly as needed. While we're on button shortcuts, I do want to show you guys a couple of things that are way more important than you would think. To power on the Asura 2 Pro Plus Nearlink version, you hold down the home button, like you do on pretty much every wireless controller ever made. Then to turn off the Asura 2 Pro Plus Nearlink version, you hold down the back button plus the B button for 3 seconds, just like nothing. Nothing's just like that, because that's weird. So what happens if you just hold the home button? That notification sound happens, but the controller doesn't turn off. It's still paired to the dongle and still registering inputs. What it actually does is switch the dongle connection to Bluetooth. Not just the controller, there's a specific method to put the controller in Bluetooth mode, but if you hold the home button for 5 seconds, the controller switches to Bluetooth dongle mode, which results in these kind of readings from Gamepad LA. The weird thing is that this function isn't mentioned anywhere in the manual, which I downloaded and read through thoroughly, and actually when I contacted Beitong to let them know I was having an issue with the wireless polling rate, checking this was not in the list of recommendations they sent me. I actually thought my dongle was defective, and they decided to ship me another controller in case that was the issue. Keep an eye out on my community page and my Twitter, because I don't need two of these and I've got another one on the way. One of the things that they did recommend was using another method to verify polling rate, which in a roundabout way led to me trying Gamepad LA's other programs, Joystick Tester and Stick Resolution Tester. You can see in the top left of this test and Joystick Tester that the Asura was registering at 1734 Hz, and this was in wireless mode after figuring out what was wrong. This actually led me down a completely separate rabbit hole that we'll get into in a bit, but as far as polling rate goes, this gamepad does have a variable polling rate, so it changes depending on how fast or frequent you're registering input, and both wired and wireless, I was mostly averaging around 1300, but yeah, it's fast. So long story slightly less long, while waiting for an answer on the wireless polling rate issue, I played with this gamepad a ton, and the big thing that stood out was the responsiveness and... I mean, I have to just say accuracy. It felt better to me in game than the Tarantula Pro I recently reviewed, which I thought felt great. And it was almost on par with the Vader 4 Pro, which if you watched any video I've done, you probably heard me say is the best controller currently on the market. That's like the gold standard that I compare everything to. So my assumption was that the up to 2000 Hz polling rate was the biggest factor in this, but I think I've changed my mind. In playing around with Joystick Tester and Stick Resolution Tester, I ended up doing a lot of reading about Joystick Resolution, which is something I've never bothered to test myself. I did that with several of my controllers this week, including the GameSir HE and SE, both of which came out to about what I expected based on a reading a long-ass discussion on Reddit, as did the Elite Series 2 and the Vader 4 Pro. I hadn't seen any results on the Tarantula Pro, but this is what I got. And then since I was in the middle of reviewing the Asura, I tested it too, and it blows even the Vader 4 out of the water. There appears to be a lot of debate about how much stick resolution actually matters, and I don't have like empirical evidence to say that it's as meaningful as I'm kind of giving it credit for at the moment. But what I do know is that based on feel, I would have said that the most accurate sticks I've used are those on the Vader 4, the Tarantula Pro, and now this Asura gamepad as well. And I have come to that conclusion on all three of these pads without having any idea of what the resolutions were or how they compared to other controllers I've used. Oh, and the Wolverine V3 feels terrible to me, and lo and behold, the resolution on it is shit. So kind of wrapping up here, I've got three real complaints about this gamepad, and you can probably guess the first two, since it's the same two things I complain about with other pro-style controllers, like GameSir's G7 line. First, the lack of trigger stops. As much as I like the way these triggers feel, trigger stops are a necessity for me. It's just something I'm always going to look for in a pro controller, and ideally mechanical mouse click triggers. Second and third are the rear buttons, because I have two separate complaints. One is that there just aren't enough. At this point, I really want companies to just always give us four rear buttons on Pro Controllers. The second is that in addition to being loud, it turns out these rear buttons are really stiff compared to pretty much anything else I've used recently, meaning it takes quite a bit of pressure to activate them, and it's both uncomfortable and more than a little distracting while playing. 
That said, I do think the controller feels extremely responsive, and it kind of makes me hopeful that we'll see future versions of some of the Bayton gamepads with the Near League technology, such as the Zeus line, which boasts some of the features the Asura line is missing. I hope this video helped you out, and if so, please subscribe if you haven't already. Likes are also appreciated, and I do try to react and respond to as many comments as possible. I'll be doing more reviews regularly, so I hope to see you back here again soon. Thanks for watching.